There's been a lot of important data coming out of some of the major commodity exporting economies this week, including rate decisions by the Bank of Canada and the Reserve Bank of New Zealand, as well as inflation reports out from Australia and New Zealand. To find out more about how some of the commodity-linked currencies are faring at the moment, I'm joined by Richard Frandlovich, a New York-based senior currency strategist from Westpac. Hi Richard, so let's start with the Canadian dollar. Earlier this week, the Bank of Canada left the benchmark interest rate at 1%, but also cut their growth forecast and left quite a double tone. How is the Canadian economy really doing at the moment and how is this reflected in your short, mid and long term forecast for Dollar Canada? Okay, I, to be fair we were somewhat surprised by the Bank of Canada's dovish, dovishness in their statement yesterday. They are formally forecasting a recession for Europe and a slowdown in emerging markets and as a result they've cut their uh, domestic demand forecast for the Canadian economy and as a result of that they now see much less inflation pressure in the Canadian economy and whatever residual um, expectation they had that they thought they could be raising rates um, sometime in the next year or so has been completely killed off. Um, to be, uh, There's no point fighting the Bank of Canada on that. That's their base case scenario and that's how they'll be operating monetary policy. That is a, that is a, a clear negative for the, for the Canadian dollar. Um, to be fair, however, we think that the Bank of Canada is probably underestimating just how much momentum there is in the Canadian economy. The Canadian economy is showing a bit more growth momentum than they're willing to concede. Um, so um, for now, we, we expect the Bank of Canada to, to maintain a dovish tack, and that's going to keep the Canadian dollar under pressure. Um, we, we expect that now that the Canadian dollar has um, it drifted lower in the last couple of weeks down towards parity uh, from a high of uh, just above 106, but Clearly, it looks like parity is now an important support level for the Canadian dollar, and it's not going to get back below that level. It looks like going forward, the dovishness of the Bank of Canada, along with the global slowing, which is going to weigh on commodity prices that matter to, to, to the Canadian dollar, will connect, keep the Canadian dollar on a, on a weak footing. So we expect uh, parity is going to offer some support in coming days and weeks, and ultimately that's going to see Canadian dollar trade up back up to 106. Um, by, by the middle of next year. Um, although, to be fair, as I say, we, we do think the, Canada, the Bank of Canada is underestimating uh, the growth potential of the Canadian economy, but we don't want to fight the Bank of Canada for now. Um, they've basically taken the wind out of the sails of the Canadian dollar. Um, it, it, it looks like the longer-term trend is now upwards for dollar cap. What about the Australian dollar? There's talk that the Reserve Bank of Australia may cut the benchmark rate as early as next week. What's your view on the matter and what are your forecasts like for the Aussie dollar over the next year? Okay, yeah, well Westpac was, uh, took, made the bo pretty bold call um, some months ago that the RBA would be cutting rates uh, by before the year is out. We're actually the first bank to make that call and uh, we, we had been looking for the bank to cut rates uh, in December by 25 basis points for a total of 100 basis points by the middle of next year. Uh, in the event, um, the Q3 CPI for Australia, the core measure, came in uh, below expectations, even below our um, bottom of the range forecast at, at 0 0.3. That, that substantially alters the inflation profile that the RBA is looking at and it now opens the door for an easing in policy as soon as next week. We now formally expect the bank will be using policy by 25 basis points. Now, a lot of that's priced in, and indeed, um, easings out into next year are now priced in. Um, that said, um, an RBA that's easing rates, um, a Chinese economy that's slowing, uh, should keep the Aussie dollar under pressure. One thing that we're watching in particular is um, spot prices of iron ore. Australia's second biggest export, the price of iron ore is now down around 25% just in the last couple of weeks. As uh, due, due to the slowing in demand out of China, as a result of all that, we basically expect the Aussie dollar to uh, to, to trade on a heavy footing. We think it's going to sh struggle into 105. Any rallies should be capped, and and we favour selling strength. Um, we, if 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 a return to 105 is seen, we will be formally recommending selling the currency, um, and we we think it's in fact got room to trade down towards parity and below uh, on a six to nine month view. And finally, what about the Kiwi? What are your forecasts shaping up like for this pair through to year's end and into next year? We think the Kiwi has uh, the best days are behind the Kiwi. A return back above 80 is going to be a real struggle. Uh, we think it could be trading down into the mid-70s and low-70s by March and June quarter quarters of next year. Um, it, it's a somewhat similar tale for the, uh, for the New Zealand dollar as it is for the Canadian dollar and the, and the Aussie dollar. We have a global growth uh, 
picture that's starting to look very patchy, global slowdown that's playing out, it has yet to have a significant negative impact on the price of the key commodities that New Zealand exports, such as dairy um, but, and forestry products. But we do expect that uh, that's just a matter of time before that plays out, uh, a weaker global growth story plays out for weaker commodities for New Zealand. Um, and, and it's worth noting, too, that earlier in the week we saw a, uh, a CPI number released for New Zealand for, the Q, for Q3 that was decidedly soft and removed any hint of significant inflation pressure from the New Zealand economy. That, too, means that the RBNZ is unlikely to be raising rates on any foreseeable horizon, certainly over the next six months. So, as I say, it's a somewhat similar story for the New Zealand dollar as it, as it is for the Aussie and, and, the, and the Canadian dollar. A central bank that has no room or, or no, no case for hiking rates and a global growth picture that, that will be keeping downward pressure on key commodities for New Zealand. That means all uh, New Zealand dollar rallies should be capped at most into 81, 82, although we think it'll struggle to even get it much above 80 in the, in the coming days. Um, and we fully expect the Kiwi to be trading with a, in a mid-70 handle uh, into the next year. So there we go, great advice from Richard about what to keep an eye on over the coming weeks and indeed months for the Canadian dollar, Aussie dollar and Kiwi. That's all we have time for today, but tune back in on Friday for more Targets and Focus. Goodbye.